Great question. When we are done with medical school, we go into something called residency to train in one specialty or one area of the body. In my case, my training was in ophthalmology, which is eye diseases and eye surgery. Now, I know you may say that eye is a very little organ, but let me tell you, there are so many things that you can subspecialize in within the eye. There is oculoplastic surgery, which has to do with everything eyelids, outside part of the eye all around it, and also the orbit, which is the bone socket where the eye sits inside. There's glaucoma, which is the specialty where we deal with elevated eye pressure. There is pediatrics where you see young patients, children, babies, and kids that are below the age of 18. There's ocular oncology, which we deal with ocular tumors, ocular pathology, which these guys are actually double specialized in ophthalmology and pathology. So they take all the tissue from the eye and add Nexa so they can make proper diagnosis for rare disease. There's uveitis, which these are eye specialists who deal with all the diseases that cause inflammation in the eye and that can be anywhere in the eye. Those specialists usually work with dermatologists, dermatologists and internal medicine doctors a lot just because most of these diseases that cause inflammation in the eye can be related to other diseases that are going on in the rest of the body such as rheumatoid arthritis and other things like that. Neuro-ophthalmology is another one where these specialists work on diseases of the eye that have to do with the nerves and also with the part of the brain that takes care of vision. There's retina or retinal surgery which these are the doctors who take care of the back part of the eye which is the retina. They get to do a lot of surgeries in the back of the eye that literally take people from going almost completely blind to seeing again so it's a pretty cool one and then of course there's the best one of all the most fascinating the most satisfying the best of the best the oscar goes to cornea and refractive surgery which is what i do subspecialty in the u.s is actually called cornea external diseases and refractive surgery and it has to do with the outer layer of the eye which is the cornea we deal with a lot of diseases in the cornea, infections, inflammations. People who want to come in and get rid of glasses come to us too because we do refractive surgery like LASIK, PRK, and smile surgery. Cornea is great because it's right there in front of you. We put the patient on the slit lamp. The first thing we see is the cornea. You can see a lot of things that are going on in the body through the cornea. It's really, really amazing. I very recently just saw a patient who was doing gold therapy for rheumatoid arthritis back in the days and she has literal gold particle deposits in her cornea. So anyway, these are the subspecialties within ophthalmology. And so you can be a comprehensive ophthalmologist that does a little bit of everything in certain countries. And in some other countries, they're limited to doing certain things and not others. It really depends on where you are. But in general, most of the medical specialties have subspecialties within them. And if you wanna be a subspecialist, and let's say like what I'm doing, train in cornea and become a cornea specialist and make that what you do most of your time then that's when fellowships come so you go and you do a fellowship training where you spend a year or two or more and then you are seeing this one subset of pathologies and doing this one subset of surgeries within that specialty come train in that and then you go out in the world and that's what you practice for most of your time now when i talk on my tiktoks about fellowships for for international medical graduates, I talk about research fellowships versus clinical fellowships. And it's very important to know the difference because when you come to the US, sometimes you have to do research fellowships, meaning you have to be involved in a department that does research in order to build a good CV to be competitive enough to apply for a certain specialty, such as is the case for ophthalmology. Most of internationals, this is what they do to have that competitive factor of having done research. It's always a great thing to have. And you may just continue doing research even after you do residency here or you do a clinical fellowship. But basically fellowships are two kinds. There's research fellowship and there's clinical fellowship. In my case, when I was talking to you guys about how you can do ophthalmology in the US as an internationally trained ophthalmologist, I talk about needing a certain number of fellowships. So when I say that, I always say clinical fellowship because it really matters. For example, in my case, when I came to the US, I did two research fellowships and then I am doing one clinical now and I'll do a second one next year. So for that path that is made for internationally trained ophthalmologists, my research fellowships will not count towards the number of years that are required for me to have an unrestricted license. Only the clinical fellowships will count. Does that make sense? Another important factor to take into consideration is that most of the time when you want to do a research fellowship, you are not required to have the USMLEs because you will not have contact with patients in a clinical setting, meaning you're not going to be doctoring, right? Whereas for any clinical fellowship, you absolutely need to be ECFMG certified, which does require USMLE step one and USMLE step two, as well as that English proficiency test, which is called OET. So to recap, when you want to apply for a fellowship, you have to know what are you going for. 
it can be a research fellowship which you can absolutely do even before going into a residency or it can be a clinical fellowship which you can only do once you are actually trained within one sub within one specialty i must say in the body a research fellowship to be really clear it can be done at any time it just means that you are training you're training to be doing research within one particular area of interest, whether that is in ophthalmology or somewhere else, it really doesn't matter. For example, research fellowship timing is not as strict as clinical fellowship timing is. I did a research fellowship during my residency. Some people do it before their residency. And I'm doing, and I actually did a research fellowship after my residency. So research fellowship is more like a fluid thing, whereas a clinical fellowship, not so much. Now I must say, I can only talk about ophthalmology because that is what I do and that's what I know. But then if you're interested in other specialties, then you can absolutely go just on Google and like research, for example, what are cardiology subspecialties that I can do. I know a lot of friends here in the US that have done subspecialties in internal medicine they're just mind-blowing they like literally do internal medicine for i don't know how many years and then they go and they, they do like i think like intensive care pulmonology or something like that and they have a lot of subspecialties in internal medicine so that's a great way to go as well if you're not sure where you want to end up at the end of the day and then when you do internal medicine you are the smartest person in the room i don't care what you say i have so much respect for internal medicine people i just like when they're in the room i'm like i'm not doing any talking you go ahead please enlighten me Another point I have to touch on is that if you are in ophthalmology and you're thinking of a subspecialty that you want to do, like let's say when I was in Morocco, we didn't have fellowship training. So we train in everything, but if you want to subspecialize in one area, you have to go abroad. So most of the people would just go abroad to do a fellowship training in something that they think they're interested in. I think it's very important to shadow someone doing the subspecialty that you want to do before you jump into it and before you start applying, because it's really important to see what aspects does that subspecialty training have compared to the training that you are currently doing in your residency. I think that residents in the US have it really great because they get to go and shadow different ophthalmologists, different subspecialties. And even when they are doing residency, like they go through all the subspecialties, I believe in all programs, but if not all, then most, because that's what I see happen all the time. And so they get a good, good idea about what every subspecialty entails and they get to make a decision that is based on the real life living of that subspecialty. Whereas for me, I always wanted to do cornea, I didn't know be that awesome luckily for me it ended up being really great but it would have been great to get a little bit of a feel before i jumped into it i'm gonna show you the lips this is the liner and this is the lipstick guys it's oh i love this my friend sophia gave it to me because we were out on dinner and i told her do you have a lip gloss and she gave it to me she's like oh it looks so great on you better than me and she gave it to me that's how you know who's a good friend anyway if you guys have any questions about fellowships, research, how to build a competitive CV, especially in ophthalmology, write me a comment. I'll get to most of them as soon as I can. I'll do my best, okay? I'll, I'll really try. But yeah, leave your questions and I'll make sure to answer them all, okay? Take care. Most of them, not all. Bye.